What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to another video by yours truly. I'm a bit off of a high from pulling my Kafka and my Branya and my one little copy of Luca. Uh, before we get into the details in this comprehensive guide on paper, before we get into the showcases and all that, I want to be clear here for the people who are always new to my channel and they don't know how I do things. Ideally, I always do a discussion about a character prior to their release. And then when they release, I do an on paper guide. And then after the on paper guide, which is what you're going to be watching in this video, shortly after the uh, a couple of days or weeks of testing the character, I'll show showcases, I'll prove everything I've been saying, or I'll admittedly say I was wrong, which I have yet to do. <laughs> um, but this is how I do things. So if you're coming in here with the ignorant mindset that many other viewers have had initially, where you're like, oh, all you're doing is showing this on paper, you're showing no work. Well, duh, duh, dumb f I have to show it on paper. She just released. As soon as I show it on paper, I then go and play the game. I'm only one person. I can only do so many things within 24 hours in a day. So that's important to establish. The other thing that's important to establish is this is a very multifaceted character inside of a very nuanced game with a nuanced combat system. So one of the cringiest things I hate hearing from other theory crafters is they try to define as if there's only one way to play a character. And that's never the case because there's different elemental synergies. There's different scenarios where other play styles will benefit that character. So one thing you will hear from me is even though Dotka with attack percent and speed is good, crit is also very good. And depending on the scenario, one can be more beneficial than the other. But at the end of the day, all of this is going to depend heavily on what kind of sub stats are uh, your characters are going to have. But if there's anything you learn from this video, understand that none of us have actually tested every single style possible and none of us are like fucking gods. We're all human beings. We come up with these thoughts and then we share and convey them with the community. But y'all didn't click on this video for all of this. So let's go ahead and get into the slideshows and hopefully you have some good insight going into everything I've been discussing. OK, starting off with the Kafka builds, the ones that everybody is talking about primarily is this one and then everybody's sleeping on the hybrid Kritka, which we will show all the numbers you need to see to uh, evaluate that for yourselves but dotka obviously that's the attack percent and speed build that everyone has been talking about uh, you have high dot damage but you have very low uh, skill follow-up and ult damage in comparison to the hybrid Kritka build but it can be you can make an argument that it's easier to build and the reason i say you can make an argument is because you can also make an argument that it's not easy to build if you don't roll on attack percent and speed and instead you roll on everything else uh, at the end of the day as i said previously it all depends on what you have on your account and if you have some godly crit value rolls trust me when i tell you the hybrid crit is going to pop off uh, so you need four stats on this one, right? Again, that's an argument against the hybrid Kritka. However, if you get those four stats, the ceiling for DPS can be much better. Uh, slightly less dot damage because you don't have a attack, an attack percent main stat. Higher DPS ceiling, as I just said. And then it's an expensive grind because you need crit rate, crit damage, attack percent speed. Not all on the same piece, but... Uh, you know, spread out throughout the rest of your relics. And then you have to be able to achieve 65 to 70% crit rate on a character who has no crit rate built inside of their kit. Now, I want to be clear here on my stance because there were a lot of morons who took a single line that I said and assumed that that was the build I was advocating. The build I am advocating is actually this one because I do believe this is going to be the better build to go for for most people just because as the same argument I made for HP% percent blade versus crit damage percent uh, blade main stat. The damage is such a minuscule difference between the two uh, with the favor of hybrid Kritka being higher based off of what I've calculated that it's not really worth tripping on. Like run whichever one you have available to you. It doesn't matter. The damage isn't that big of a difference. Most of these nerds argue about a 2% damage difference, believe it or not. Dead ass. They'll be in the, t in the comment section like, what is he talking about? This is a 2% more damage difference. How dare he say that build is better? That's usually what you're dealing with. Uh, moving on, Dotka. How's the build gonna look? Uh, we're gonna do pure Dotka substats. Again, focusing on attack percent and speed. This is the light cone I recommend, but of course, use whatever you have available to you. It's not that big of a deal. Uh, sphere is gonna be damage percent, which is lightning. A rope's gonna be attack percent, and then you have your body and your boot. Body's gonna be attack percent, rope's gonna be attack percent, and then we have our sets. Now, here's a nuanced discussion. If you have a garbage sizzling thunder set, then you can do two piece sizzling thunder with two piece musketeer of the wild wheat. It's an 8% trade off. And if and guess what? If you have God tier substats on that wild wheat, it's better than your sizzling thunder four piece set. 100%. It's an 8% trade off and you might have an 8% attack boost in the wild wheat substats. You see what I'm saying? 
Uh, on the other hand, you also have the option of running the two piece 6% speed increase from that new relic set. You can run that right here as well. Ideally, don't feel like you have to run the band of the sizzling thunder set if you have dog shit sub stats. Now, the difference between Dotka and hybrid Kritka is just the fact that you're changing the body for a crit rate body so that your skill, follow up, and ult can all crit. Uh, and then, of course, you're going to try to build in crit rate, crit damage in the substats in addition to getting your attack percent and speed. One of the difficult thing, things about this build is that you have to get your crit, crit up very high and you have to make sure you meet the speed threshold of hitting 134 speed so that you can go twice. Um, and if you if you meet that threshold, then you're going to go twice and you're still going to be critting and uh, doing your thing with that. And then, of course, your attack percent is going to be there as well. Uh, but the the build is pretty much the exact same as the other build. The only difference is you're trading the body for crit rate and then you're building in crit rate and crit damage. All right. Now we're moving on to Kafka's multipliers. When she is triple crowned, her skills at 160 percent on a single target. Her adjacent targets are going to be 60 percent. Kafka's follow-up attack is going to be 140. These are all the multipliers, right? Now, what's interesting here is everybody, I, I heard this so many times, her skill and follower are li very low. It's not worth building crit on her. Uh, a lot of these morons don't realize that you're going twice in a single cycle with Kafka. And if you're going twice, that means you're doing these two times in addition to everything else. So 160% with 60% adjacent and 140% single happening two times in a single cycle is actually a very impressive amount of damage. So critting with these is actually very solid, which you will see later on in the other slideshows. Now this here is, is I'll be honest, it's a garbage multiplier, but at the end of the day, if you crit on this, it'll even compete with when the dot triggers and does more damage case in point let's say your dot does 3k more damage on an attack percent speed build well if you're critting with this and dealing the same 3k more damage guess what that just <laughs> it just negated out whatever advantage the dot has uh but i will say ultimately at the end of the day i agree with most people saying that the dot is going to be the bulk of her damage i don't agree with them saying that this is garbage and not worth critting if you absolutely have a god tier crit build viable for her for instance 160 plus 140 is 300% in total, right? This is 290%. So these are actually dealing more damage than this because the skill only triggers the dot on one target. It only triggers that dot on one single target. So this 300% is actually 10% higher than that dot. The only way this dot pops off is when everybody takes their damage when their turn comes up because the dot triggers as soon as their turn comes up. But if you're running a crit build that's only dealing a little bit less damage, it's not that big of a deal. Now, moving on to the next argument. Again, a lot of geniuses in the comment section from before Kafka's release were trying to say that you needed 50% EHR. And they were trying to tell me the Captain Obvious shit. 100% base chance doesn't equal 100% base chance. No shit, Sherlock. The grass is green outside. You wanna, you wanna point out anything else obvious? What a lot of people failed to mention though, is that from the traces, you get an 18% EHR already guaranteed inside of her. The other thing you get from the Ascension is a 30% increase to your base chance, bringing your base chance up to 130% total. So if you put in the math against the hardest content in the game, uh, Kokolia, Savarog, and Ebon Deer, you still have a 92% base chance without building a single ounce of EHR in your crit. And let me tell you something, as somebody who's been playing Silver Wolf since her release, none of my Silver Wolf's um, bugs ever miss, and they're, ne they're not even at a 90% chance, they're more like at an 85% chance, and I've never seen a bug miss a single time on my Silver Wolf. So 92% chance is pretty much guaranteed, at least for me personally. Again, I can't speak for everybody else, but I don't need anything more than a 92% chance based off of how my Silver Wolf lands every single debuff she applies on the enemy. Um, and again, if you're not going up against Savarok, Kokolia, and Ebon Deer, everything else is 107% overkill guaranteed chance to apply those shocks. So you do not need, quote unquote, you don't need any, but having a little bit of extra just to ease your stress, hey, you know what they say, you cannot put a price on your um, your mental health. <laughs> you can't put a price on that peace of mind. Anyways, do what you gotta do. Take that with, you know, however you wanna take it. Moving on, best supports. My support picks are gonna be for Hyper Kafka, uh, Ting Yun, and Asta. If you're, doing, if you're going up against two elites or less, which to be real, most of the memory of chaos upper floors, it's always gonna end up being two elites or less for the most part. And if that's the case, nobody's better than Silver Wolf. 
Uh, but if you're doing two elites left, Asta is going to be good. And then finally, just a universal synergy, Asta. As you'll see, the consistent factor in all of these is Asta. She is a tremendous support for uh, dot compositions. You cannot go wrong with her ever. Now, I did make her a little bit smaller to... to uh, symbolize that silver wolf is much more valuable in that in that um in that situation and then for the universal composition i made pella a little bit smaller because her uptime on her defensive stretch is not going to be as good as asta's uptime in my personal opinion plus asta also gives that speed boost which is very nice um but one thing i do want to talk about speaking in terms of a speed boost most people seem to think that if you pop Asta's ult, you're just automatically gonna go three times. That's not the, the, the point at all. In fact, depending on how fast you finish your cycles against a certain scenario, you may not ever go three times. You may have to go six cycles before you get that third, uh, that three swings in one single cycle turn. So people try to generalize this speed stat shit like, oh yeah, if I get 10 more speed, I'm going three times. No, you're not. You're probably not going to go three times ever if you if you finish it in less than four cycles so you have to take that into consideration too and not just believe that putting on more speed is just going to give you three turns in a single cycle um finally the next argument sampo versus luca i've been hearing this everywhere who sampo who should i build bro at the end of the day it's a dot composition you should build up all dot ca characters but if you're not going to do that asking this question is just fucking idiotic it's like saying who's gonna win when i when i put my bulbasaur up against the squirtle who the fuck do you think's gonna win bulbasaur or charmander obviously it's an elemental synergy surprise they use the same concept as pokemon bro sampo's better against the wind element luca's better against the physical element it's not fucking rocket science guys jesus uh, substat roll concept two to three re-rolls on preferred substats this is going to be important because when we get to the uh to the concept of comparing crit cut versus attack percent i use this concept to do my theory crafting and it's always going to be above the average gear but below the god roll gear okay so two to three re-rolls on preferred substats is the way i'm theory crafting and then all armor has three preferred substats with one brick substat it'll make sense when we get to the uh to the rolls trust me a uh, team built concept i'm gonna be running three fleet of the ageless sets on everybody except kafka and then i'm gonna run two dot characters with one of them being kafka and the other one being whoever is fitting that pokemon scenario i just mentioned one support and then one healer now i want to be clear here that does not mean that the three dot characters uh composition isn't viable in fact go for it i'm sure it kicks ass this is just how i want to run my kafka but guess what i'm probably going to end up doing the three i'm going to do everything i'm going to do every style possible because it's probably going to make me enjoy the game more and it's probably going to give me some answers that i didn't know prior to doing it so just this is just an example i don't have all the time in the world to provide every example out there this is particularly what I want to run. Kafka will have space station set. That's a 24% attack increase. And then three fleet of the Aegis will give 24% attack to the entire party. Um, and then this, this is going to be the example of what I'm doing. Here we go. So as I said before earlier, two to three preferred substat rerolls, right? So this is what, this is the concept we applied here when comparing it against the uh, pure Dotka, which we're going to pull that up. But yeah, let's go ahead and go over this. So we rolled one time on crit rate. Oh yeah, this is important. I chose a mid roll on both builds, meaning so when you roll a stat, there's a low tier roll, a mid tier roll and a high tier roll. I chose the mid tier roll because that's the average roll. So 5.84 is a mid tier crit rate roll. Uh, so we got one roll re-roll on crit rate, one re-roll on crit damage and one re-roll on attack percent. So we got three preferred substats right here. The cool thing about hybrid Kritka is that every stat is pretty much a stat you want to have whereas on the attack percent speed uh scenario only two of the stats are the ones you want to roll on and that's very impractical because chances are you'll get two to three on those two stats and then the two the other one to two will be bricks so this is the positive about when you do get the substats that you need on the crit build. all of them are absolute bangers it's either crit rate crit damage attack or crit rate crit damage speed they're all going to be very good uh stats for the hybrid crit build. whereas with the attack percent build, you have to land on either attack percent or speed and honestly i'm more of an advocate of you landing on attack percent than speed I personally think all you need in this game period is 135 speed. After that, you can focus on everything else about that character unless they can get up to like 175 speed, to which you'll probably need something like a pay to win light cone. Uh, but anyways, we'll save that conversation for another day. 
if you look at all of these, you'll come to see I did I gave them both the same treatment. Okay, we gave all the love to the attack percent and speed, and then we were realistically uh, giving rolls to other substats because that's how it's going to be for the average person. In fact, this build is above the average person's build. So even then, I'm giving this a lot of leeway because. 43% attack and sub stats on this is very hard to achieve, guys. You only have head, hands, boots, and sphere to get that 43% attack because you're walking an attack percent main stat on the body and an attack percent main stat on the rope. But with that being said, getting 32% crit rate and 70% crit damage is just as goddamn hard. In fact, people are going to make the argument that it's harder, and I would agree because that is harder. But if you get those rolls, this build can pop off. In fact, in a god tier to god tier roll setting this is builds going to have the advantage because you're going to roll more crit and crit damage sub rolls which is going to amplify your damage all the more further with the skill follow-up and ult, especially the skill and follow-up anyways you guys go ahead and take a gander at this we're going to move on uh for the hybrid crit cut total stats we're going to be at 3430 attack and then this is going to be our crit rate to crit damage ratio 70 percent over 120. finally going and taking a gander at the hybrid crit cut damage on a single target uh for the skill it's going to be 16,615 on a crit strike but the average, considering we only have a 70% crit chance, the average damage is gonna be 13.9K, okay? So round it up, you can say 14,000. Uh, for adjacent targets, that's gonna be the number, and then we did the same thing all the way down, okay? So these are the numbers that you could see for running hybrid crit crit damage plus Silver Wolf. Now, let's take a look at the Dotka. So this is gonna be the attack that you have on the Dotka build with the substats and the, the body as an attack percent. The damage is gonna be right here. Um, now, I want you guys to keep in mind, I will explain this here in a bit, but basically, since both builds are capable of going twice in one turn, assuming you're going to finish the uh, Memory of Chaos inside of a five cycle uh, threshold. You're not going three times on this build. I don't care. Even if you have 154 speed, it's not going to happen, especially any less cycles than that as well. So both builds are going two, two times in a single cycle. Um, when you take that into consideration, I took the average damage, not crit strikes. I took the average damage of the crit build and I said, how much damage is that going to be doing as opposed to this build? We got 14K damage loss on per two turns. We got 8.4K damage loss per two turns. And then on the old minus 2.4K per target hit. And then finally, this is the this is this build's bread and butter and that everybody's pitching for. You get plus 3.4K on a single target, meaning the target that Silver Wolf ults on, that's going to amplify your damage a bit more because of the defensive shred and that uh, all type resistance. But every other target, Silver Wolf can only ult on one target, right? So every other target's going to be regular damage, 2.25K on every other da a target. So the argument here is... How many times is the dot triggering? Because if this dot triggers enough, it'll close this damage gap for sure. Because right now we're looking at a what? A 22.4K damage gap in terms of these builds. However, if you were to say the dot build is hitting five people because there's five people on the field, well, the dot build's going to be stronger. No doubt about it, because that's 3.4K on a single target, 2.25K on four other targets. Actually, it'll probably just come out to be about breaking even, which would be in the benefit of the dot build, right? However, if there's only three or less targets on the field, you are quite literally dealing more damage with the with the crit cut build. You just are because there's not that many targets for the dot to pop off. Now, the way this shit works is every time you use her skill, the dot procs on one target. And then every time an enemy's turn comes up, they take another dot tick. And then finally, when Kafka ults, they take another dot tick. But Kafka's ult isn't up every single turn, at least not in this scenario. So you're going to ideally have one dot guaranteed per skill and then another dot guaranteed per enemy that pops up and then finally how many people are out on the field this is a very nuanced discussion you see what i'm saying but what i've seen based off of these numbers is that the crit build is going to be uh coming out on top if it's three or less enemies if it's four or more enemies the dot build is going to be much better and the reason that the crit build is stronger is because it's not like it's not doing any dot damage it's definitely doing some it's doing 17,322 and then 11,000 on the aoe to the target that's not being debuffed by silver wolf so it, it, this is what people fail to comprehend they think oh the dots i can't tell you how many times i had a dumbass come in my comment section talking about dots don't crit no fucking shit bro again the grass is green outside what else do you want to make obvious we know this 
but that doesn't mean that the rest of her kit is non-existent you should ignore it now you can you can choose that option but i'm only battling the people who are trying to say crit is garbage this is far from garbage and and, and not in any scope of the imagination is this shit garbage but I do recommend the other build because it seems easier to build and it seems like it can do the same damage. Again, same argument as the crit and HP% percent blade scenario. If it's doing near the same damage and it's easier to achieve and it has its perks, oh, I'm going for that for sure. And it's more nuanced and universal. I'm gonna go with that build. But my entire argument with these morons was them believing that crit was just trash because it's not, it's not trash at all. It's actually very strong. Now, the last thing I wanna talk about is I did compare the difference when you take out Silver Wolf and put in an Asta. Asta, the damage comes down a little bit, obviously, but Asta buffs the entire damn party, plus gives the whole entire party speed. So you can make an argument that Asta is better uh, against scenarios where there's three or more targets because Asta is going to buff the entire team, increase their speed. She is, you can make the argument that Asta is better than Silver Wolf. You absolutely can. It's possible. Um, but with that being said, what is the damage difference now when you're running an Asta as opposed to a Silver Wolf on that damn scenario I just pitched? As you can see, the damage actually came down in favor to the Pure Dotka. It's not as much of a damage gap with Asta on the team composition. See, I'm objective, man. I'm not going to sit here and try to swing you a certain way because I said something. It's looking like on the Asta scenario, you probably still gonna, it's, it's honestly still looking like the same thing because the damage came down on this one too. It's the same argument, though. How many people are out on the field, you know, and if there's three or if there's three or less, you're probably still going to get more damage with the Kritka build. If there's four or more, the dot's going to be better. But at the end of the day, we're sitting here arguing about five percent uh discrepancy and damage bro it's not that big of a fucking deal kafka's so broken that you're gonna clear any content in the game so at the end of the day the cringiest and most cliche line possible play whichever one you're enjoying bro it's not that big of a deal from my assessment if you've learned anything from this video you've learned that they both can do their thug fizzle depending on the circumstances um i tried not to make this video go past 30 minutes it's looking like 21 minutes here i don't know anyways um, there's a lot more to talk about what i will do is i'll be doing showcases try and do i'm trying to do both builds we'll see how that goes but for now the funny thing about all of this is that i'm gonna be rocking my kafka with the goddamn inert salsada set because it has the best sub stats for me right now which ain't it's and you should be rocking the 24 percent but i ain't got nothing good so i'm rocking the inert salsada set with a two-piece musketeer of the wild wheat and a two-piece this sizzling thunder that shit is nowhere near the best build but guess what? It got the best sub stats. Case in point, play what the fuck you got on your account, my guy, my girl. Anyways, thanks for watching. I hope I brought you guys some value. Sorry for all the passive aggressiveness. I should probably start showing all the dumb fucks that harass me so you guys could see where that comes from. Because from a, com a viewer who's new, you're just thinking this guy's just an asshole. But if I showed you all the idiots that I deal with, you would be like, ah, that's where Smack's coming from. <laughs> Much love, man. Uh, I'll catch you guys on the flip side. I'm out.